I find that when I step back, I want to have a place of safety, I think. But then I also want to have a piece where it's like, wow, okay, that's a bit jarring. Because I really think that that's <laughs> who I am. <laughs> Oh yeah, because you have two cameras on, so you'll flick back and forth. Perfect. So I grew I grew up in uh, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, and I'm a first generation Canadian. My parents immigrated individually from Italy. Um, and I think their idea of being successful was being a doctor or a lawyer. And I was a creative. I'm Laurie Mirabelli. I'm an abstract artist from Elmont, Ontario. I always knew I was a little bit different. I think that really came to light when I was in elementary school. I had a really hard time focusing in class. Children with learning difficulties wasn't really identified back then. In my mind, I wasn't trying to cause trouble. I was just interested in everything else that was going on around me. I was probably uh, undiagnosed with ADD or ADHD. I was always pinned as the lazy child. I wasn't lazy. I just learned a different way. When I was really young, my mom thought it would be very important for me to learn our language, which was Italian. I didn't think it was important, but she still had an idea that she was going to send me to Sunday school and Sunday school wasn't going to church. Sunday school <laughs> was going to Italian school. I honestly, to this day, cannot remember what we learned. What I do remember learning was drawing and I got in trouble all the time. You know, hindsight, looking back at that, my mom had sent me to school to learn a language and what came out of that is I learned a language, but it was my language. Control and safety were really important to me. I needed to have it. I absolutely needed to have it. And I felt like it was, a, it was without it, I, I, I wouldn't survive. I rebelled as a teenager, for sure. I hated school. I really honestly did not like school and Eventually, I, I ended up dropping at high school. I didn't have teachers that uh, supported me. I just felt like because I wasn't learning how everybody else was learning that school for me was a waste of time. In my mind, I was living a great life. I was like on my own. I hadn't lived with my parents since I was 18. I always had a job. So there I was, pub night out at a university. It was my first time stepping foot in a university and the energy that I felt on campus was like nothing I've experienced before. And so we sat down and everybody's having a drink and the very first question that came out is like, like, what's your major, what are you studying? It was at that moment that I realized I was different again. And it wasn't long after that, that I had made the decision that even though I didn't have a high school diploma, that I found out you can go on to college um, by uh, applying as a mature student. And so sure enough, that's what I did. I now have a diploma in college and then finally a degree. It took me a while to finish it off. This is the reason, I'll be honest. <laughs> it, I got called in by the career counselor at university and she said, what are you doing? And I said, what do you mean, what am I doing? She goes, you can't just take all psychology courses. You have to take credits in other, in other areas to finish off your degree. 
So I instantly went, oh, great, this is just like high school. So you're gonna make me take courses that have nothing to do with what I wanna do for a living. And she goes, okay, well, what else do you like? And I'm like, I don't know, I like art. I kind of thought I might as well take this opportunity to kind of push myself further and learn something that is out of my wheelhouse. You would uh, really kind of paint the way the masters used to. How to manipulate the paint, how to work in transparent washes so that uh, you could see the underneath coming through, um, how to layer colors, how to like layer over a drawing. That's to me kind of what it felt like. It was just fascinating. I, I feel time is a bit of a blur lately. Some days I look up and I, it's like, didn't I used to have a desk job? How did I get here? My work actually brought me down here every three to six months. And so every time I would, instead of staying in a hotel, I would just come to the farm and my sister would put me up. And so I always used to point at the house and say, the second house and say, one day I'm gonna live in that house. One day I'm gonna live in that house. And so it's still, even though that's been since 2020, um, I find it fascinating that I wake up at least five days a week and I come into the studio and I hear birds singing and I don't hear traffic. I don't hear sirens every two minutes. I'm living in the country and I'm a full-time artist. It was such a bizarre switch when I decided that I was going to pursue an art career and then I instantly tossed aside the realism and I went directly to abstract. I had never done an abstract painting before in my life but I in my mind I felt that abstract was a step out of my comfort zone because I had already done realism. So I, I dove into this exploration of unfamiliar territory which is weird because I like safety. But I think this, this was me kind of stepping out of my comfort zone in a safe kind of way. And the safe kind of way was that I was very geometrical in terms of what I was painting. It was structured and it was organized and there wasn't any rawness to it. So there was a part of me that hated what I was painting, but it was where I needed to start. If I reflect back, over my years um, as a child, growing up into an adult and then becoming responsible, I realized that I keep saying the same thing over and over in my life, whether I'm making a painting or just making a home, it's the same thing, safety, safety and control. It's taken me a long time to actually realize that my art is saying the same thing that organized chaos, this yin, this yang. Um, it was a subconscious thing. I didn't know what I was trying to say, but I was trying to say, I wanna feel chaos in my painting, but I also wanna know I'm safe at the same time. And I think that's why I play with this area of white space, this place where you can go in and explore my painting and feel all of these stress, this, anxiousness, this chaoticness, but then have a place where you can go and sit back and enjoy and relax and feel comfortable. And I think line is also important in my work. It's part of my history. It's part of where I started as an artist, drawing, using a pen or a pencil or a pencil crayon, whatever my parents could afford to give me or whatever I had in front of me. I always knew I could make art as long as I had a pencil or a pen or a paper. I envied artists that could stay in the pocket and produce gorgeous work um, time and time and time again, where I was really fighting that. And so when I, I realized that I was speaking my own language, I started to uh, incorporate symbols into my work. In the beginning, I was really uncomfortable. It didn't feel right for me to add it to my work where people could see it. It was more of a personal diary for myself. So I, I would just kind of write down things that were important to me or things I was struggling with. Um, and then I would cover it up and then paint over it. 
In 2017, I watched a documentary and the narrator said that whenever humans see shapes and patterns in an organized fashion, that we automatically interpret that as language. That's why I, I kind of made up my own symbology for the language that I was speaking. And now it has become a staple in all of my work. I think there's signs and symbols in everything we do. It's just being open to see them. Color theory was really important to me um, when I was finishing up university. And it really taught me to understand how colors relate to each other and, and uh, to be mindful how colors next to each other can really change how a color looks. Um, so I really kind of take that foundation and apply it in my work. In, in terms of myself speaking onto canvas, I always, I, I find that when I step back, I like to push the balance where there's some tension in the painting. I want you to be able to look at the painting and see soft areas to land, which is, I use a lot of white space in my paintings. Um, I want to have a place of safety, I think, is kind of where it is, where you can kind of just come in and stay in this nice neutral area and feel comfortable and look at all the layers and the texture and say, oh, that's, that's really nice and calming. If I had to put myself into a, a statement of what my personality is like, is truly organized chaos. I have to put that organized part in me uh, in, in certain sections so that I have, I have that feel of, okay, I know what this is. This is comfortable for me in this little square here. Um, but then there's also the other side of me where is chaos. I, I love encaustic work. I can easily switch to encaustic and be such a happy artist. Um, so I try and I try and capture that in my work yeah. where uh, it confuses people thinking that it is encaustic. And so in order to get a nice, really nice varnish sheen, uh, I use matte, obviously. And that's, that's the thing that I really like about Tri Art Paint is the glossiness of your paint. And I know a lot of people don't like acrylic paint because it has such a, a shine or a plasticky feel to it but that's because people haven't realized how to finish it properly. So when you actually finish it properly, it people get very confused and think it's oil. When you have a, a paint that's really glossy and transparent or the, uh, the shine is really high, and then you go over with a matte, it just is the perfect combination. When I switched over to Tri Art, and then I switched over to actually using a spray gun to varnish, it really changed the look of my work. I had someone who really put it into perspective for me, and this was years ago, and they had said to me that you should be embarrassed about your work five years ago or 10 years ago. He goes, because if you looked back at that work and said to yourself, that was the best work you've ever done, then you should find another job. I have this need for safety, but I, I think the yin and the yang of that is I detest that I have this need for safety. I wish I could be more um, free. You know, my parents worked hard for their money, but they didn't have a lot of extra money. So two of the sisters wanted to do like organ. Back then it was organ, now it's more piano. The other sister did girl guides. And then me, I chose horseback riding. Well, of course, horseback riding is extremely expensive, but I was determined that's what I wanted to do. So every day my dad would come home from work and the phone book would be open to the Sault Ste. Marie Pony Club every day. And it would be circled and then starred and then circled again, hint, 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 hint. My dad decided that he would put me into it. I lost my mind when I found out that I was actually gonna take horseback riding lessons and then I totally fell in love and I wasn't afraid. When I finally had my own money and I had my own job and I could afford to actually uh, pick up that dream of mine, that's when I realized, whoa, uh, I'm not in control here. This is a very large being and it has a mind of its own. I felt unsafe. I felt out of control. 
and it was the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. I started to realize that this was like a hurdle that I needed to overcome. Letting go of control, uh, putting myself at risk, which I don't do very well. And then I took it to a whole new level. I woke up one morning and I decided it, I want a horse. My horse's name is Johnny Cash. I absolutely love him so much. Somehow I don't know like how this happened, but I bought a horse that had never been ridden before. Nothing like taking safety and control and just literally packaging it up and throwing it out the window. I never really understood the difference between a school horse and riding a horse that hasn't been a school horse. They're completely different animals. Um, my horse still has a brain in terms of he has input into what he wants to do that day. And so my horse is saying, you don't know what you're doing up there, so I'm just gonna do whatever I wanna do. And it's a real, it's a real struggle. And it's a struggle because I'm afraid and I'm fearful and I don't have control. So I, I always think that things come into our lives at times for certain reasons. Using Johnny a little bit as an analogy, he, he comes home tomorrow. He comes home tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, when he comes home tomorrow, I'm on my own with him. But I have to trust in myself that I can do it. And, it, and there's no difference between me and doing my work. I can stay in the safety net of just being happy where I want to paint something's familiar to me, but I also know as an artist I need to grow and I need to push myself and I need to explore new things. And every new thing that happens in my personal life absolutely comes out onto my canvas. I have to trust myself that I can be a safe place. And I have to trust myself that exploring new bodies of work and pushing myself further as an artist is gonna only enhance my career and not hinder it. And so I have to be okay with who I am. I have to be okay that every year my work is going to change and it's going to morph into something new and not, not be embarrassed by it, but embrace it. I have to trust that I'm the soft place to fall, that I can take care of myself and uh, that safety is within me. It's there. It's always been there. And just believe, believe it.